Good morning and welcome to this hearing of New York City Council Committee on Contracts. My name is Ben Kalos and I am chair of this committee. For those of you who are watching remotely, please feel free to participate in this hearing by tweeting me at Ben Kalos. Uh, before we dive in, I'd like to recognize our fellow committee members. Uh, we are joined by Council Member Jim Gennaro, uh, Mark Joni, and uh, former Contracts Committee Chair Helen Rosenthal. We will be joined by Council Member Inez Barron. Today we will, and she just walked into the door. Uh, today we'll be voting on Introduction 1995-A, sponsored by Councilmember Diana Ayala, and Introduction 2006-A, sponsored by Councilmember Moya, both geared towards improving working conditions for our city's hardworking nonprofit shelter security guards. The first bill is Introduction 1995-A, which seeks to improve the training requirements for security guards employed and work at homeless shelters. Specifically, this bill would require all contracted shelter operators to ensure that all security guards working at Department of Homeless Services shelters receive at least 40 hours of training after they are hired, including 10 hours of shelter-specific training, as well as an eight-hour annual refresher course. The second bill we're voting on today also relates to security guards working in homeless shelters. Introduction 2006A would require entities operating shelters pursuant to contracts with the city to pay these security guards working a prevailing wage. Each year, the city contracts with human service providers to deliver a range of essential social services, including elder, foster, and after-school care, mental health counseling, shelter and housing programs, and food assistance to about 3 million New Yorkers, and yet these workers face their own financial hardship. As a result, workers are employed by human service providers earn comparably low salaries. In fact, New York State, the pay rate for nonprofit human service workers is so low that many rely on public benefits. And in 2016, 60% of those working in the sector were utilizing or had a family member utilizing at least one public assistance benefit, such as Medicaid or food stamps. Uh, not food stamps, uh, supplemental nutrition uh, assistance program, SNAP. This is particularly troubling as the majority of these workers are women and a large proportion are women of color. The situation is similar for security and fire guards who work at the city's network of homeless shelters run by contracted nonprofit organizations. Reporting suggests that employees of nonprofit run homeless shelters face difficulty securing housing due to low salaries offered. According to the New York Times, quote, many employees of New York shelters are themselves in precarious economic situations, taking on multiple jobs, working overtime, and struggling to find their own home. We actually worked with the New York Times on that investigative reporting in my office. Security guards at a nonprofit run shelters typically earn just over the minimum wage, while those employed directly by a city earn about $18.45 an hour or $7,000 to $8,000 extra per year. Furthermore, workers at nonprofit run sites are provided with the degree of benefits afforded to those employed directly by the city and often do not have or cannot afford medical insurance or other benefits. The security and fire guards who work at shelters, whether employed directly by government or by a nonprofit human service provider, can encounter a range of incidents, some of which are violent and often interact with clients who face mental health issues. However, the security guard training mandated by the state does not include any special education training or other provisions for security guards working in these specific settings. The training for fire guards, meanwhile, focuses purely on fire safety, while some security or fire guards employed directly by city may undergo additional training, such as sexual harassment and de-escalation training. Those employed by the nonprofit human service providers may not. Furthermore, security guards employed by nonprofit report that they have to pay for their own training, unlike their peers in city-run sites. Uh, before we begin on the vote, I'd like to take a moment to thank Com Contracts Committee staff, Legislative Council Alex Polinoff, Policy Analyst Leah Skripiak, and Finance Unit Head John Russell for their hard work putting this hearing together. Uh, I'd like to uh, now, I'd like to also take a moment to thank Finance Analyst Frank Sarno for his service to the committee over the past year. Uh, Frank is moving on literally to another state for other opportunities. We wish him well. I'd like to now turn it over to Council Member Moya to make a statement on his legislation. Thank, thank you so much, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you to the uh, committee members as well. Um, having had the opportunity to share uh, with this committee how our city's homeless shelter workers continue to make sacrifices for countless New Yorkers, especially throughout this pandemic. Uh, and we have had an opportunity to fight for these workers who stood up for those that needed it the most. Uh, New York City cannot be the capital of the world if our own uh, don't have an economic capital, uh, if our own are struggling to make ends meet. Uh, my bill intro 2006 uh, as part of the Safety in Our Shelters Act to establish prevailing wage for shelter security guards and fire guards is one way we move forward uh, cre towards creating an equitable standard of life that everyone deserves and should have no matter where you come from, where you live, uh, or where you work. Uh, I want to uh, applaud uh, 32BJ for their countless uh, and tireless dedication uh, and leadership. And of course, I want to thank my colleagues who have signed on uh, to this bill and for joining uh, me in voting to pass uh, this bill intro uh, 2006. Uh, thank you, Chair, for uh, the time.
Thank you very much for your leadership on uh, this legislation and fighting for workers here, there, and everywhere. I now ask the committee clerk to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on contracts, proposed introduction 1995A and proposed introduction 2006A. Items are coupled. Chair Kalos. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye. Gennaro. I vote aye, and I'm proud to be a sponsor of both of these items, and uh, yeah, I vote aye. Mm -hmm. By a vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, both items have been adopted by the committee. Hereby adjourn this hearing of the Contracts Committee in time for the next hearing at 12 o'clock. <laughs>